Thus, we replace S2P and S1P by 2D. So, we will get the error involved is about 0.005%. So, S1P minus S1P, S2P and S1P is a prox. Hence, we will be having a constructive interference resulting in a bright region. When x equal to xn is equal to n into lambda capital D divided by D which n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 etc. On the other end, we will be having a dark region near x is equal to xn is equal to n plus as lambda D divided by D where n is equal to 0 or plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 it will go on. Thus, dark and bright bands appear on the screen as shown in such bands, they are called as fringes. It shows that dark and bright fringes are equally spaced and the distance between two consecutive bright and dark fringes is given by beta is equal to x n plus 1 minus x n. Where beta is equal to lambda capital D by D which is the expression for the fringe width. So, let's discuss more on the interference of light waves and Young's experiment. Obviously, the central point O will be bright because S1O, S2O which is equal and it will correspond to the value N equal to 0. If you consider the line perpendicular to the plane of the paper and passing through O along the y axis, then all points on this line will be equidistant from S1 and S2 and will be having a bright central fringe which is a straight line as shown in the figure. In order to determine the shape of the interference pattern on the screen, we note that a particular fringe would correspond to the locus of points with a constant voltage of S2 P minus S1 P. So here is the one. Whenever this constant is an integral multiple of lambda, the fringe will be bright and whenever it is an odd integral multiple of lambda by 2, it will be a dark fringe. You are able to see the fringes here. D is equal to 0 0.005 millimeter and this one is 0 0.0025 millimeter. You are able to see the dark and bright fringes. Thus the fringe pattern will strictly be a parabola. You can see it. The locus of point P lying in the xy plane such that S2P minus S1P is a constant and it's a parabola. This is how. If the distance D is very large compared with the fringe width, the fringes will be very nearly straight lines. In the double slit experiment shown, we have taken the source hole yes. On the perpendicular bisector of the two slates S1 and S2, which is shown as the line SO. What happens if the source S is slightly away from the perpendicular bisector? Let's see. You are able to see the double slit experiment implementation in a small form. This is how the fringes are happening and the interference is happening. As I told, consider that the source is moved to some new point S. And suppose that Q is the midpoint. Q is the midpoint of S1 and S2 over here. If the angle S, Q, S is phi, then the central bright fringe occurs at an angle minus phi on the other side.
If the source S is on the perpendicular bisector, then the central fringe occurs at O also on the perpendicular bisector. If S is shifted by an angle phi to point S dash, then the central fringe appears at a point O dash at an angle of minus phi, which means that it is shifted by the same angle on the other side of the bisector. You are able to see the practical implementation of the slits. The ES is moved with the two slits here and screened the fringes here. The wave nature of the light was demonstrated convincingly for the first time in 1801 by Mr. Thomas Young by a wonderfully simple experiment. He lit a ray of sunlight into a dark room, placed a dark screen in front of it, pierced with two small pin holes beyond this at some distance a white screen is placed. He then saw two darkish lines at both sides of a bright line which give him sufficient encouragement to repeat the experiment. This time with a split flame as light source with a little salt in it to produce a bright yellow sodium light. This time he saw a number of dark lines regularly spaced. The first clear proof that light added to light can produce darkness. This phenomenon is called as interference. Thomas Eng has suspected it because he believed in the wave theory of light. Here is the Thomas Eng experiment. We should mention here that the fringes are straight lines although S1 and S2 are point sources. If we had slits instead of the point sources, each pair of point would have produced a straight line fringes resulting in straight line fringes with increased intensities. 